Whales have an attraction because they can do things that we can't, and they can do things that we don't understand. They can communicate with each other in an aquatic environment. They can play games with each other. They can find their way around. They can have their young. They can do all of this in the water when they're mammals and they still have to breathe air and keep warm. We had no idea that Kavna would be pregnant when she arrived. It had never, ever occurred to us. I don't know why, because being a, a female of her age, it would be quite natural that she would be pregnant, but it had never occurred to us. I would say about the beginning of June, her mammaries began to swell and become very pronounced. And about the middle of June, the nipples that are usually concealed in two little slits were protruding. So we knew then, these were very obvious signs to us that her body was preparing for birth in the way that all mammalian species do. We watched that whale. We watched all the whales, as a matter of fact. Every day, there was at least four hours of watching just those whales. Every day, I would go down first thing in the morning and just sit in the quiet of the underwater viewing room and just watch her. Some people would say, well, don't you get bored? Isn't it dull? Well, it wasn't at all. It was just a very wonderful experience, and I just didn't want to miss a minute of it. For science and for me. The whales developed marvelous games and very creative games, many of them very physical. It wasn't until I began spending all those hours downstairs watching them that I really began to feel that I knew them. And over time, all of us that watched really got to know them so well. Lugosi is very, very responsive to people. He loves people. He loves to have somebody at the window. The younger female, Sanak, was typically juvenile, sort of skittish, fast. She has a temper. We also looked at Kavna's personality, and she just seemed to us to be such a good, solid female. The waiting was the hardest thing. Every time there was a little change, we thought, any day now, any day. And the days passed, and of course it went on and on. Many times I would get home, have my dinner, and I would say to myself, I have to go down. I just, I just have to go down. I have a feeling that I should be there. So I would go down and I would stand watching the whale in the middle of the night. Nothing would happen. We had one very definite false alarm. One afternoon, she began to throw her tail against the side of the pool violently very violently, and she would snake along the side of the pool. It was 
terrible to watch, and we thought, this is it. But it was too early. It was only the middle of June, or rather the beginning of June. But we put our plan into action, which had been ready for weeks and weeks before. We went down, we waited, and within an hour or so, everything had calmed down, and she was right back to normal. It was a fire drill, and not a fire. We never did figure out just exactly what was going on, but she continued to do this periodically throughout the rest of her pregnancy. Well, on this afternoon, I was down there, and just about ready to call it a day and go home, and she just drifted into the middle of the pool. She'd never done that before. And then all of a sudden there were gallons of this fluid. And I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought, I'm really seeing it. It's happened. The membranes have broken. It's going to start. The appearance of milk jetting from the mammaries as she was going through contractions was quite a surprise. Um, it was very heartening to know that she was prepared for this baby and that she did have milk. But all during the, the latter part of her delivery, the milk jetted from the mammaries with each contraction. The most wonderful thing to us was that she was so calm. She just looked so totally in control. And from this, we rather suspect that she may have given birth before. She was so cool. But then things started to progress rather quickly. Her vent started opening more and more, and we, of course, were waiting, thought we had lots of time. At a few minutes after nine, we realized that the baby was being born head first. Now typically birth in cetaceans it has been flukes first or tail first. Everything was going so beautifully and then all of a sudden here was a head first birth and I really thought it was dead. What could we do? All we could do was watch and just hope that the whole thing resolved itself one way or another and actually Things started progressing so quickly after that that we didn't have too much time to worry so much about ourselves. But she still looked so good. She was moving around, swimming, and so on. And then she started pushing the baby out. Every two or three minutes, the baby would be pushed out and then withdrawn. So things were going along quite smoothly, relatively speaking. <laughs> Just before 10 to 10, the baby was delivered right up to the pectoral fins and then it opened its mouth and it wagged its head. It was so fast, it was just so fast, it was just sort of pump, pump and gone and just so vigorous, like a little worm. The baby was totally disoriented. It was swimming on this animal and bumping into that one. And that was so hard. It was just so cute and so brand new. And all its flippers were all limp and soft. And here were all these big giants. And he just, you know, we wanted to go in there and protect him and do all these things for him. And we couldn't. Couldn't do anything. And of course, the whole thing settled down into a very natural environment, natural situation. They sorted it out themselves.
I can't describe to you how I felt when the baby died. I was totally devastated. Not because I felt responsible. Nothing that we could have done differently would have changed it at all. But the fact that he had brought so much joy to everybody, and me personally. And when he died, it was just, it was just such a loss. Such a loss. And I remember walking through the park the afternoon of the evening that he died, and I knew he was going to die that afternoon. And I couldn't work, so I went out and I walked in the park, and all these beautiful leaves had just fallen off the trees because it was such a windy day. And I thought, that that's really what life is all about. Here's this beautiful leaf. It changes the lovely gold, and then it falls. And it's going to rain, and somebody's going to step on it, and it's gone. And our little whale was the same way. It was just like a, a little flash, a star. And his, his life should have been longer, but it wasn't. And he just sort of peaked and went in a season, just like a leaf. And it, but it was still really, really hard.